What up YouTube? Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be fitting a USB port to my Balco 3D printer so we can do some like PID tuning and that kind of thing. So let's get into it. So you're probably asking, Will, why are you fitting a USB port for? Like most printers come with them anyway. You are correct. Uh, correct. What is correct? You are correct. Um, like 99% of printers do come with USB ports, but, but for some unknown reason, unbeknownst to me, Balco, the original Balcos, the first line, um, had basically the original Wanhao board inside of them, but they didn't include the USB port for no apparent reason whatsoever. The V2s or the sort of later line of Balco printers do have the USB port, but then have a custom board. I'm going to try and do a video on that later on anyway about like the comparison between the two and that kind of thing but for this video we're going to be soldering on a usb port and then cut how did you get in how the window's shut how did you get in look, just look at it you can't see because the camera's too low but where is it look look, look see that little interloper there just photo bombed or video bombed, whichever the right way is putting it, my video. The little bugger. Get out, man. Go, get that way. That's it. Goodbye. Well, that was unexpected. Well, anyway, yes, uh, we're going to be soldering on a USB port, cutting the hole out, and then giving it a test. So let's get started. So first you want to start by taking the screws out of the bottom. There's six screws that go into the actual bottom plate of the printer and then two screws that go into that little support piece that goes across the middle, which you'll see in a moment. Next, just take the bottom plate off the printer. You might have to bend it slightly if you've already done the Z brace mod like I have, but it comes off without too much trouble. This is the actual board inside. It's a Wanhao version 5.1. Here I'm just taking the little uh, ribbon cable out of the board. You just need to flip the arm up, pull it out, and then flip it back very gently. Next, there's four screws holding the actual board in place. There are little spaces on them, so make sure you don't lose them. There's one in each corner, so just carefully remove them. Next, take the little connector out the side of the printer that goes into the board. Here you just want to make a note of where the connector is actually going to sit on the metal of the printer. Uh, I actually just put the connector on top just to give me a rough idea of the top dimensions as well. Then you can just remove your board out very carefully. Next, grab your little connector and just place it through the holes on the board. There's four little pins where the actual connections go through and then two pins that hold it in place. Then just carefully solder each of those little connectors that's going through the board. They don't take a lot of solder at all. They're really tiny pins, so just take your time, be careful, and you'll have no problems. One thing to note is you really don't want to leave the heat on those connections for too long, else you could damage the board. So if you're struggling, take the heat off, let it cool down and then give it another go. Here are the finished connections. I'm not the best at soldering PCBs, so if I can do it, you can do it. So here I just plugged it into the computer briefly with everything connected back up just to see whether it's all working and so far it looks pretty good I hit connect and I get all the text on the screen so looking good so here I'm just putting some masking tape over the power supply so none of the little filings from when I do the dremeling of the actual side of the case gets into the power supply because that would be pretty bad so from here it's just a case of slowly and methodically uh, dremeling through the side of the case. It's actually really hard. I went through about seven discs to be able to accomplish this. I actually only used a dremel but it might actually be a better bet to drill a hole and use a junior hacksaw as well just to make it a bit cleaner because my job wasn't the best. 
Here I'm just using my CompuCleaner to give it a blast out to make sure there's no little dust or filings anywhere inside the case. So from here it's just a case of reassembling it in the reverse order. I screwed in the little board, put all the little connections together, um, peeled off the masking tape from the power supply so you don't want to leave that on there. So here I'm just plugging it into the computer again just to make sure everything's still working. Um, I'm using Pronterface here just to test a few things like the home function and uh, a few move functions just to make sure everything's working. But yeah, everything seems to be working fine. Well there we have it, there's the finished mod. I say mod, it should have been on there to begin with, but never mind, <laughs> we work with these things. Um, but yeah, as you can see, very handy to have a USB port on your printer, and we're gonna be looking at, in the next video, how to do some PID auto-tuning, because I've been having some fluctuations with the um, temperature of the nozzle and that kind of thing, so that will be really useful. But anyway, thanks everybody for watching. If you enjoyed, please like, comment and subscribe. It helps me out a lot. And I shall see you next time. Ta-da!